Yeah, there we are. Yeah. Good evening, everybody. Hello. Good evening. <laughs> and welcome to the February edition of our Azure First Day event. And as always, we have some great content for you. Uh, we'll start with Rory uh, Preddy, who will help us build better accessible applications on Azure. Um, and we'll continue with uh, André van der Berg, who will show us to, to blog about all sorts of stuff we learned this evening. Um, and how to do this using Markdown and Azure DevOps. And then we close with Esther Bartel and Fred Bersen with a session on um, helping you do, oh, we are going to do, do, do a session on ARM templates and how to empower them with Project Bicep. So that will be great as well. Um, so again, if you have any questions for our speakers in the chat, we'll try to cover as many at the end of the session. And Rory is also willing uh, to answer them during the session. He just told us. So if you have any questions, uh, just uh, put them in the chat, and we'll make sure we, we ask our speakers. Um, and I'm not forgetting anything, right, Luke? So no, I, I think, think we, we are... can get Rory in here. So Rory, are you here? I am here and ready. Perfect. Rory is a senior cloud advocate at Microsoft, and I'm not going to ruin your entire intro slide, because I have a tendency to do that to every of our speakers. Um, so I'm not going to do that. But you're going to talk about uh, programming for accessibility. And as a developer, I'm a C-sharp developer. We are getting, hopefully, we're getting more and more aware on, on, on possible lingering issues around accessibility and trying to do our best and also be in an accessible user group. Um, we just we try, and we hope we will get to try even harder after your session. But what was your personal driver to do a session on this very important issue? I didn't want to get into teary-eyed mode already. But um, so no, no, it's all right. I think it's important because it also makes the audience understand that this is dear to me. So I've had about seven or eight back operations. So I, I am a, a dwarf, achondroplasia, and I've had seven or eight back operations. And I remember sitting in a, a, a hospital. I was on a ventilator and, and learning to breathe and walk again. And I said to myself, you know, this has to be for a reason. This has to be for a purpose. And that that mindset, that idea that um, the my experiences would drive me into being able to evangelize, doing more for other people and empowering them has actually uh, uh, kept with me all of these years, though. And every time that it gets tough and every time I have to put in a little bit more effort, I think of uh, that moment and I say to myself, make it count. And that's really what you the, the, the core of accessibility is to make that experience count for the people that use your systems. Wow, such a great answer. It's such a personal driver. And thank you for sharing because that's very personal. So thank you. Um, and I, I think we, we're out of questions for now. So again, if you have any questions, put them in the chat. And the floor is yours. Great. I'm going to share my screen because I have some really great content to share with you. Um, you can see my screen? Yes. OK, there we yes. go. A nice little clicker here as part of my midlife crisis. I bought myself a lot of nice toys. And you'll see my midlife crisis car coming up. Um, so you can follow me at, at Rory Pretty. Uh, I try to do uh, some memes. I try to do uh, accessibility updates. And I'm hopelessly in love with Java uh, all these years for the, the last 20 years. So uh, we do a lot of uh, Azure and Java updates. Um, OK, so let's get started. Let's go back there. OK, so my midlife crisis, my car, uh, with uh, my car pedals. Now, um, these have only failed me once. <laughs> and, um, and, and this is really the, the, the story, the narrative I want to uh, say to you is because um, you can see there, there's a bolt on. So they, I actually bolted them on there. And this is similar to a lot of other things that I find myself getting into because I bolt on things. And historically, um, you you find that people with uh, who are differently abled um, really bolt on to get around that. You can see here, here I am getting coffee um, and uh, yeah, there's this Ethiopian decaf. It's a, that's a horrible picture when you have Ethiopian decaf there. Decaf should have never been invented. It's like skim milk. You know, it's either milk or skim. You, you don't do one or the other. And um, 
The problem with Bolton is that you really, you, you waken the Hydra. And the Hydra is a mythical creature that when you chop the one uh, head off, then the other head grows up. And, uh, and that is the bug Hydra. Because when you look at accessibility and software, when you chop the one head of the uh, accessible Hydra off, then it kind of comes up there because looking at accessibility as bolt-on never works because it's 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 part of the process and this is the the story of what uh, I want to uh, tell you because I want to try uh, pop your empathy bubble. <laughs> Sounds a little bit weird when I say that, but you all live in an empathy bubble and um, I know this because you're not me and I'm not you. And you can't be me because you, you, when you look at uh, uh, my experiences and your experiences, they differ. And it's just the nature of being human, though. And uh, how do we get out of those bubbles? Because if you don't get out of those bubbles, then you're going to design for accessibility. But you, you ain't going to know that that over there is almost impossible. And I remember um, I, when learning to walk, uh, I had uh, about a one centimeter gap that I had to get uh, over. And I looked at that gap and I realized that no one had actually catered for that. And so let's start uh, with a plan, a plan on how we can actually get you more uh, accessible. So first I'm gonna define or undefine accessibility. Then I'm gonna understand your organization's unique accessibility motivators. And I'm gonna show you the difference between a stick and a carrot. I'm going to set achievable interim milestones and then tools and finally measure, improve and automate. So let's start with uh, what is accessibility. And when you remember the bolt-on, accessibility isn't bolt-on. So accessibility is the design of products, services and environments so that everyone, including people with disabilities, can fully experience them. And we at Microsoft believe that inclusive product design with compliance with productivity leads to innovation. When you look at the world um, without those uh, rose-colored glasses, you start to look at the world differently. And you realize that uh, accessibility is innovation. And I'm gonna show you how uh, through this process and lead you on the, the path of innovation. We need to discuss disability. Uh, the world, the word doesn't exist. Now, when you go to the doctor and you're not, you're not feeling too good, and you say, "Oh, doc, I, I'm, I'm feeling a little bit um, under the weather," he goes, "I think you've got the disability." The only time that you feel disabled is when you have uh, mismatch human interaction. And I know this. As part of my midlife crisis, I bought one of those BMR scales. I got onto it. I, I put my weight uh, at the time, 65 kilos. I've lost. 15 kilos, uh, I'm 50 kilos, whoop, whoop for me. And then I put my heart four foot one or 120 centimeters and it had a crawling baby and a very tall man. I thought, hmm, I'm not really that tall. I'm gonna put the baby. And I got on, it, it did its little calculation and then it uh, called me horrible names. And I was thinking, what? What I I really feel disabled right now, and I was thinking, you know, like into a smoky room uh, dis, uh, kind of design session about someone designing that scale, and they they weren't really designing for people uh, who weren't them, and I felt disabled, and I, I remember that moment. Then I said. AI is going to think I am disabled for the rest of my existence. I need to actually change it. And I've been speaking on how to make AI accessible also. So we've designed um, disability and accessibility. Let's also look at some principles around accessibility. There are only four principles. I'm not going to go into uh, too much detail, but they are defined by the Web Center for Accessible Guidelines as perceivable, operable, understandable, and robust. Perceivable. Can you see it? So that's visual impaired or the silver generation, so people over the age of 65, and they, they need uh, help to be able to see certain things. And I know I'm uh, getting to that age because I need glasses now, so perceivable, can you see it? Operable, can you use it? If you don't have fully use of your arms, you're an amputee, you want to be able to operate your, uh, your systems with a, a design principle. Uh, understandable, can you understand it? And what we're seeing also now with WCAG, um, the Web Center for Accessible Guidelines, is that they've also included recently in understandable ADHD autism spectrum, because the last thing you wanna do is make your system not being able to use um, or stressful. And lastly, robust, it won't break future technologies. So um, for example, a responsive design system, if you turn it landscape to portrait, it shouldn't break your systems. And those are really the only four real uh, uh, principles I want to uh, take with it. And we're gonna go through a few uh, technical details when we go through our uh, demo a little bit later on. So now let's define motivators. 
First of all, uh, a stick legislation. And uh, we have the US 21st Century Integrated Digital Experience Act and the EU Parliament Directive on Digital Accessibility that says if you're not WCAG 2.1 AA compliant, then like Canada, you will get a $100,000 fine per day for civil facing websites. And you know, at Microsoft, uh, we're also kind of seeing that because we want to kind of get ahead of the curve. So everything we kind of do now is accessible. You go to Microsoft.com, you go to the office sites, you even go to Azure, it's all accessible because we, we see that the stick is coming there and we don't want to be uh, bedonard. Uh, that's an Afrikaans word for uh, hit really hard. And we, we're seeing that also for GDPR. Remember GDPR and I, we, everything has a pop-up and a password and everything and, you know, trying to just browse the website is impossible. The same thing's going to happen with legislation. But I'm a big belief on the carrot. Um, and it's summed up um, with the quality of life quote by Bill Gates. For most of human history, we put our innovative capacity in improving the quantity of life. Because we're living longer, our focus is starting to shift towards improving the quality of life. We're becoming altruistic. We want to improve uh, people's lives. So now we've defined that. Now we can also see, wait a second, I want to take the altruistic approach and I want to become aware of people's difficulties. I want to go from pity to sympathy to empathy and to compassion. But how do I do that? How do I improve my emotional engagement? And you do that by becoming those people. By stepping out of your empathy bubble and you use persona spectrums, uh, Claudia, Ashley, and Ron. So Ron's an 82-year-old retired, multiple conditions, arthritis, losing his hearing, uh, might have visual uh, impairment also. You take Ron and then you build uh, around your system. So you go and you test these systems. Now you can go and get those labs, alpha.gov.github.io, uh, accessibility personas. Um, and uh, you, you start to realize, wait a second, um, the bubble that I was in, I, I can actually uh, pop it because I can become these people. And you start to look at inclusive design. Now, inclusive design is recognize exclusion. Understand that you're excluding Ron. Then once you do that, you can solve for one extent to many. I'm going to give you an example very soon on how to do that. And finally, learn from diversity. Have diverse teams. Learn, understand how and why you're limited by your bias and also your, uh, using your persona spectrum. So let's take a persona spectrum. Um, this is a very common one, and this is an amputee. So someone who has uh, limited uh, use of their arms or uh, and, and no uh, arm. And um, we have uh, on the top here, someone who is, uh, wait, there we go, someone who has one arm. Then we have an arm injury. So someone who might be like me, use the mouse way too often. You can see I've got my last trackpad and my, my and, and then we have a new parent. And I know what you're saying. Rory, new parents I really don't have a disability, but I promise you, you've been a parent. You're financially sleep deprived, um, you know, stressed. You, you, you're really not able to use a, your full body then. Now, if you go to your manager, your business partner, your customers, and you say, I want to design a system for like uh, an amputee for the one-armed person. Now, the U.S. Center for Statistics says that only 26,000 people actually have an amputee in America. But the temporary disabled people, a uh, motorcycle accident or uh, arm injury, 13 million. Situational dependency, uh, 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 situational uh, uh, accessible issues, 8 million. So in total, 21 million people. So now we've solved for one, extended to many. Now, when you take people with accessible, accessible needs in the world, there are 1 billion people. Now, the people who are vested interest in those people, friends, families, loved ones, 3 billion people. That's half the world, nearly, that needs accessible software. Now you can see exactly how you can uh, extend this and, and why this is important, because now you can be innovative. You can approach these people, uh, the silver generation, people over 65. It's a $1 trillion industry that you're not catering for. We take our persona inspections. We superimpose them on our, our journey. So we've got registration, navigation, and checkout. These are ticketing uh, buying systems back when airlines were safe, actually. Site landing, preferences, registration, help logins, add to cart, search flights, help, checkout ticketing, and then experience on a survey. Um, so we superimpose it there, and everything changes. We've changed the way that we, uh, we look at innovation. We're sponsored design for uh, site landing, capture for registration, font and color options, um, accessibility help with single sign-on, callback help, one-button access, 
Um, and then right at the end, my, my favorite AI adjustment. AI will become aware of your issues. And I know this because I did a talk on how to make Alexa more accessible. Because I, I noticed that when I screamed at Alexa, it never really understood I was angry. So I taught an AI emotion. You can, um, I taught it sarcasm actually, because it's the hardest emotion to understand. And if you go into Cortana or Siri or Alexa right now, they understand emotion because they have emotional teams in the background adjusting their entire experience um, according to your uh, emotion and your accessibility. So we already see now self one extend to many and AI adjustment. Automate, automate. Let's look at milestones now. So yes, bolt on right at the end. We must become accessible. When the shippable project had uh, gone out and we deployed the system, ain't gonna happen. So shift left. So I'm not gonna jump out there because I think my, my headphones have get caught though. But traditionally, we've seen a huge movement from software development and we're shifting left to be able to bring in smaller investments to make the shippable project product really more accessible. So you've got accessibility, uh, not bolted on right at the end, but towards the entire process um, of uh, your design process. Now, let's see how you can actually get this done with the, the whole reason that you're here is tools. Introducing the open source accessibility insights. Now we've partnered with DQ Labs. They, they make a really nice rules engine. And we said, okay, great. Let's now build this into everything because at the core of it, Microsoft wants to be accessible for themselves. So when we delivered Office and, and uh, Microsoft.com, we made it accessible and we open sourced it and we open source accessibility insights for web, uh, for Windows, Android, CRCD, and uh, for uh, Azure DevOps and GitHub Actions. You can get them all in accessibilityinsights.io. And what actually does it do? Now, accessibility insights is a, a check that you can check throughout your entire development process to make sure that you're accessible. And it uses WCAG 2.1 AA compliance. And I'm gonna do a demo for you now. Um, and you can tie this in, this is in .NET. I know I'm a Java developer, but this is .NET. And you can see here, we've got the test run and you can run this in Azure DevOps um, with your accessibility insights. And we've even got some nice uh, demos here that you can do github.com forward slash Microsoft X dash pipeline samples. And you get a nice little dashboard there, and we're going to go through that a little bit later. But what about if you can't actually check or test or you've got a legacy systems? What do you do there? And we have something called Immersive Reader. And you're familiar with Immersive Reader. If you have Word and Office and PowerPoint or even Microsoft Edge, it comes with Accessibility Reader built in. And what it does, it makes your entire um, experience accessible just with a click of a button. So here's the accessibility little button. You click on it. This is uh, with OneNote uh, or Teams, and you get an access. And I'm going to do a demo for you there. So you can take your legacy system and right at the end, if you have to, bolt it on. So what can accessi uh, Immersive Reader do? It can read language, can understand uh, nouns, adjective, pronouns. It uh, can translate to 60 languages. We're going to do a demo now. Uh, Paul of you, Francais, I'm going to sh show you how. Uh, you can do pronunciations syllables, and then also picture dictionary on common English terms. Now, we've shown you how to bolt on, we showed you how to test, but what about uh, AI? Now, we've also got services, and my favorite is computer vision, that can make uh, your systems accessible by ex extenuating, helping your systems become more accessible. My favorite is computer vision. So here's a picture of uh, three individuals, Satya, um, Bill Gates and um, uh, Steve Ballmer. And you can see there, it's scanning them, it's seeing how, uh, how old they are, if they're happy or sad, but most importantly, it's giving a caption. Second, they'll Bill Gates, Steve Ballmer, posing for a photo, confidence 97%. Captioning and, Im and alt image for visual impairment is the most important and most difficult thing that people battle with. And it's, it's baked into a lot of our systems, but it's also in Azure computer vision. Now we're gonna do a demo and I've got so many nice coding demos. Um, so enough slides, let's go into our demo. So the first thing I wanna show you is the JUnit results that I just ran right now. So you can go into your uh, pipelines. This is Azure DevOps and I've got my pipeline created here for my X Core Maven setups. And you might, you're thinking, oh wow, Rory, this is very uh, 
uh, kind of uh, easy for you to show after the fact. But I'm going to actually, because I've got enough time here, I'm going to create one on the fly. Uh, let's go into here, pipelines. We're going to go uh, n n new pipeline there. I always like going off script. It, it gets the hosts like really confused here. So we're going to go uh, GitHub here. Uh, we're going to go select. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to select a project that I've created beforehand. And this project here has all my test results for a, a very simple uh, page there. It's got a, a, a normal page there and then hasn't got any errors. And it's got a little JUnit test there that I can run. And I'm going to put that into an Azure pipeline. And I'm going to show you how to actually create a, an accessible Azure pipeline uh, right now. So I've got my tests there. So you've got your test pipelines there. And I'm going to search for Maven there. I've got my Max, uh, my project there, Axcore Maven. Uh, I've selected, configure your pipeline. Uh, I'm going to say Maven because we, we've got some tests. I've got all of the nice uh, Maven commands already built for me there. I'm going to go save and run. Um, and click the save and run, and I have accessible DevOps pipeline. It's going to test my pages, or it can test a number of other pages, and it isn't actually more difficult than that. And that's DevOps with testing, and it uses the same engine as Accessibility Insights, and we're going to see exactly what that is right now, the DQ labs uh, on how to get your violations. So let's look at also uh, the um, the accessibility insights while that pipeline is running there. So this is a uh, the w3.org um, accessible before and after demonstration. So I've got my inaccessible page and my accessible page. I click on my accessible page, and you notice there isn't any change though, because what the people have done in the background, they've made the page inaccessible by doing horrible things. They've removed tab stops, they've they removed lists, they've uh, haven't got image out, and I can test this by going to that image. Uh, and going uh, inspect, and you'll see there suddenly now there is no alt tag linked to that image. I also, if I go into my list items here and I go inspect, you'll see there that they've actually done BR tags instead of list tags. So a screen reader won't actually uh, read that. And if I go into the tab stops here, you'll notice also uh, there's no tab stops because they've removed or modified the, the tab stops. Now I want to check um, what the issues are. So I go into my Chrome or Edge plugin there called Accessibility Insights for Web, and I go fast pass. So I want to do it very quickly. There's, a, there's an ex, uh, assessment that you can go through. It takes about 45 minutes. Um, and this is a very detailed, sometimes you can't test everything uh, with automation, but I want to do an automation to show you how it's easy. And in the same library that I use for DevOps there, I'm going to go into... Uh, my accessibility fast pass there, and watch this, run fast pass, drrr, run my rules there, color contrast is wrong, language is wrong, alt image is wrong there, and I can test there, and I can export that uh, to my, uh, my DevOps, but more importantly here, uh, let's just minimize that, and go back into Chrome, uh, let's make that smaller, wow, this is, this is what happens when you've got way too many windows. Let's close that for a second. Let's try that again. I love going off script. Uh, there we go. And now it's giving me a visual representation of every problem on my page. I can click on that problem there. There's no alt tags there. I can go file the issue straight into GitHub and uh, using that tool. I can also go and in, uh, inspect uh, any of the items there and it will give me the solution to change it. You can see there, fix one of the problems, inspect the HTML, copy the failure detail. And I've got all of these other tools that I can actually use. For example, tab stops. Remember I said there's no tab stops there? I'm going to switch on tab stops there and now I can see uh, let's just that it doesn't actually tab out. I completely get lost and if I go to the accessible page here, and a tab stops here, you'll see that um, it tabs there. It's your one-stop shop, but this library is also for DevOps. And now uh, let's also go back into uh, our next demo. Let's close that. We've got our pipelines. Yeah, our job ran. We did our job on the fly there. We've got our jobs there. We've got our Maven uh, projects there. It ran a clean build there right at the bottom. Um, and we've got our 28 uh, tests there, uh, to 35 tests. Um, and then we can go into our dashboards, into our boards there. Uh, let's go to our boards. Uh, now I want my dashboard. I created one earlier today. There we go. My dashboards and my manager's happy. I'm happy and I'm keeping myself honest because I'm testing obviously all the time with my uh, Azure DevOps. Next thing I want to show you is Immersive Reader. 
So immersive reader is a tool that implements proven technologies to read comprehensive. And I've coded this in Java. You can do it in .NET also. Um, uh, let's go here. Uh, sorry, I'm clicking way too many screens here. I want to go into my uh, Visual Studio Code, and I want to go into my uh, Quick Start Java. Yeah, there we go. Into Immersive Reader. Now, the Immersive Reader, I've got my token, and it's running on. Um, wait, let me just get you guys back there. I've lost the Teams uh, Thursday. I've got my Zero Thursday there. You've got beautiful face there, Debin. Um, and I want to go back here and I want my immersive reader. So I've got my immersive reader. I've got my cognitive service there. I've set it up. It's, it's simple. It's first, it's free for the, um, the first million characters and then three cents for every other million characters. Um, and then I've just got a little bit of JavaScript here that says get the token uh, to authenticate and then pop up the immersive reader, lo launch immersive reader. And I've got my text here. I want to do that page in uh, what what language uh, would you like to meet? German. Choose a language. Dutch, German. Let's do German. So I'm going to go back to Immersive Reader, and now I'm going to make this entire page uh, accessible by clicking that little button there, JavaScript, and it's coming up there, and now I can read it. Immersive Reader is a tool that implements proven tech. I can also go in and change it uh, for uh, line items here include the grammar, I can include the uh, line focus, picture dictionary, and now I'm going to change the language here uh, to uh, German Germany, the entire document, and that took me three seconds. Das bewährte Techniken implementiert, um das Leseverständnis für neu auf and that is immersive read, and it's so powerful because it, it's just you can just bolt it on at the end of it. So you, there is no excuse not to create accessible software. I've shown you DevOps, I've shown you uh, um, uh, accessible uh, insights, and now with immersive read. And the final thing I want to show you is the um, the captioning bot. Now the interesting thing, we entered a caption a captioning competition called No Caps. And uh, it's run by Facebook. And it says, can you beat human readable captioning? And uh, it's not as easy as you think. So let's take this person here. Uh, caption that, though. So for me, it's a, a guy wearing a, a red uh, a baseball cap. Um, and he's hit a ball. And he's in a baseball field. But that's way too much information. I'm being, uh, uh, and it might, might not be ready. So I'm going to click on it. And I'm going to see exactly what the right caption is, though. Then the image and it says, I think it's a baseball player preparing to swing a bat. That is better than a human being. And also I'm going to train it now. How well did I do? Very well. And we know this is better for a human being because we are still part of that competition. Now what we did is we took image recognition and linguistics and trained them over each other to create linguistic image captioning for novel captioning. And this is available in computer vision um, with uh, Azure Cognitive Services. Also, free for the first thousand tries, sorry, million images. It's, it's insanely free. And uh, let's try another one quickly. So I'm going to take a, another one here. Oh, yes, uh, I'm, I'm uh, a sandwich. It looks like a, a grilled cheese sandwich with ham or something like that. Um, and uh, it's got some sesame seeds and uh, some cheese. And let's see what it, what I think is a sandwich on a cutting board, because that's the important thing, the context and the background and being able to give a proper representation. You did brilliantly. Thank you so much. And that's everything I wanted to kind of show you today. Um, let's go back to our slides here. And now I want to enable you to uh, play from current slides to go forward in this and to challenge you. Conclusion. Empathy, how do you create it with your persona spectrums, become that person, solve for one, extend to many, shift left, take your systems, test in the beginning, test at the end, test forever that you want. And then finally, uh, I'm going to just admit your people there, um, finally, the most important, automate and AI. How do you know how well you're doing? You know that you're doing well because you're testing constantly. And your AI is also giving you the ability to test with you and to change the entire process if necessary. Take advantage of AI and really leverage with the fourth industrial revolution to be able to do that. All of that I've, I've said to you in Microsoft.com forward slash accessibility. Follow me at Rory Pretty. 
and start your journey. Do that fast pass, take your websites, and then understand exactly how you can uh, help your audience, your customers, and your developers. Thank you so much. Wow, thank you, Roy. This is such an amazing session. This is, it was so full of energy and, and whenever I'm going to encounter someone and I probably will that, that is not convinced how important accessibility is, I'll refer them to this session. It was, it was amazing. Thank you so much. Um, and in the chat, it was mostly just compliments. So definitely check the chat and, and read them back because it was one compliment after the other, but unfortunately no questions. Um, Luke, do you have questions from another channel there from YouTube perhaps? And uh, no, no, we did not receive any questions. So I guess it was a crystal clear what you all told us. <laughs> well, normally we will ask you, what is the main thing we'll start with? What, what is the one thing we have to do? But you already told us we have to use the tools you showed us. You showed us the demo and just start using them and fix those issues. Do you issues? remember in the beginning I said to you, learn from diversity? Learn from diversity by hiring diverse people. And when you hire diverse people, they become advocates to be able to change the world. Um, and that's something that Microsoft believes we have uh, hiring for autism and we have a diversity hiring, uh, uh, accessibility hiring team. And once you do that, the people will show you the way. Um, because everyone, all of us actually have a story to tell. And uh, I, I strongly believe that if you look deep um, within your systems and the people, you can hire the best people to become advocates for your own uh, systems to become accessible. The best advice, I think. Thank you so much. So any last minute questions? I'm just going to just look at the chat. Yeah. Still not anything. Well, we had a lot of viewers, so it was just was a very clear presentation with the best advice ever. So thank you so much. Thank you so much thank for having me. Thank you for being me. here. Yeah, thank you very much. Cool. Well, let's move on to the second session then. Yeah, look, I'm not sure. I, I'm, I'm seeing the, 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 the videos running, so I'm not really oh. sure if what everyone's seeing, but I yeah. think we have a small break, right? So I'm, I think we have a couple of minutes, right? Until the next session from uh, Andre, we will talk about uh, blogging using Markdown and Azure DevOps. Um, and we'll kick off at, is it quarter to eight? If we follow the schedule, it will. Yeah, well, we, we most definitely will. So we'll be back in a couple of minutes with, uh, with Andre.